the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, RFRA. Wow, are we fighting about that. And in many ways, with very good reason. Because no one wants to see people get hurt. I actually mean it when I say no one. I don't think people on either side want people to get hurt. And I'm certain that whatever position people take, they don't realize in advocating for what they do, they may be hurting others. The irony here for me is that this speaks to much larger issues, if you can believe there are even bigger issues than that, about how religious identity and ideology are so often not only used, but badly abused in this country and in our culture wars. Probably no surprise to hear someone say that at this point. But what may surprise you is that I believe the abuses, if not always equal, are present on both sides of the debate. And if not exactly always abuses, certainly profound misunderstandings that are getting in the way of having a healthier culture. So, for example, how often do we hear people of a strongly held position on one side of this debate about RFRAs saying, you know, the folks on the other side are not hateful, mean-spirited, stupid, or medieval. The people on the other side are not ugly homophobes, necessarily, if that's one position you take, nor are the people on the other side who take the opposite position, those who simply disregard the Bible, don't care about God's will, or anything else that often gets said. In fact, reasonable people, good people, can disagree about this. And if we can't begin to admit that, we have no shot except an endless cycle of legislation, litigation, and no real resolutions to the big questions that animate our society. There has got to be a way, for all of our sakes, to combine passionate advocacy with spiritual and intellectual humility, not paralysis, not silence, but genuine humility that recognizes the dignity of those on the other side and even the partial truths embedded in their views. Could we imagine starting just by trying to understand the following, that freedom of religion is much more than it's often understood by those on the left or the progressive camp. It's not simply freedom of worship. It's a 24-7 deal that may actually be played out in a bakery or a flower shop as much as in a church, a synagogue, or a mosque. And on the side that often says, this is about our freedom of religion, yes, but your freedom of religion doesn't and never has been meant to guarantee that you can insist on living in a world only with those who reflect your views. Making room for each other is as sacred a principle, even a religious principle, from our Constitution all the way back as is respecting individual religious rights, including the right not to participate in things you think are objectionable. They're both real. So as Passover begins tonight, Friday night, with a meal called the Seder, the centerpiece of which at the celebration of freedom is a family and friend-based feast in which questions are far more prevalent than answers, I wonder if we could continue this debate and celebrate freedom in line with that tradition, asking those around us whether we agree with them or not, what motivates you? What is it you really want? What is it you want for yourself and for your country? And is it possible that even those with whom you disagree, A, want the exact same things, and B, even when they disagree, are motivated by very similar, if not the exact same values? Whatever policies we come to in light of that, I think we can all agree they're likely to be far better for all of us, whatever our views are on any one particular issue or set of issues.